magic of the Cybernet Space Cube, the computer enhanced podcast of the future, Transformers Slag Podcast. What up, everyone? How we all doing this Saturday night? It's the Transformers Slag Podcast Saturday Night Livestream main event. I am your host, Proto Man. I'm the face that runs this place. I'm the voice you hear Monday to Friday, and it is Saturday. It's Saturday night. And we're going to be talking about Transformers, more to meet the eye, robots in disguise. So, interesting week we had. Um, we had the March Madness of always having a live stream every single Thursday. And uh, unfortunately, due to stuff leaking out and some stuff literally being in retail at the same time and it coming like, it's kind of crazy how it's like stuff was revealed yesterday and the following day. I literally go to Toys R Us in Canada and the Cheetor, United Cheetor, was staring right back at me. And I was like, well, okay, we're living in a weird world today. So we're going to cover the news, some new things here and there, some new stuff that's popped up over the past 24 hours. And uh, we'll talk about that. We'll cover things, some of the insights, some of the new information. Uh, we'll talk about uh, also um, some other non-transformer related stuff because there was some fun stuff that was happening this week. And I figured it's topical enough because I know enough people were asking me in PMs and stuff. So I figured, why not? Why not? Might as well. And uh, some announcements, too. We got uh, a new segment coming out tomorrow uh, that was supposed to come out this morning today but due to technical difficulties i'll get into that in a moment um and why we didn't get a segment on friday on top of that <clears throat> but we'll get into that so let's jump into the news but first but first let's slide over to the chat who do we got here today we got sharif youtube member we got youtube member james hopskins we got horned owl we got uh Patrick Brown, Will Murphy, <clears throat> Ashnud, named after the Magic the Gathering character, James Hopkins, uh, Morgatron Prime, Guillaume is here. Who else is here? Princeton Phalanx 59, T-Formers 2002, my heater just kicked in, I heard. <laughs> uh, Talib, yeah, we had a, a little bit of a ice storm yesterday. Luckily, we have power. Uh, Bigum's here. Billy B, one of my Patreon dudes. Roman Schilling, Will Will Murphy, Bigham again, a whole bunch of people here. And I'm pretty sure more are piling in right now. So we're going to cover the news. Once again, if you want to give your two cents, hit that super chat button and we'll get right to you. Uh, before that, Prince Fox and I was able to get Sandstorm, Silverbolt, and Shard from CMD Store. And here's the irony. CMD Store is located here in Montreal. <laughs> which is even more nuts. Um, so if I just went to CMD store on, on Van Horn street, which is literally a street I lived next to growing up, uh, I could have probably got all of that. But again, I'm going to wait until sales for some of those. So either way, what's up, Mikey and Louie. So we're going to jump into it. <clears throat> got quite a few things to cover. Most of it, not really new, but whatever. Thank you for subscribing. Rudy Mac. Welcome to the madness. That is the Saturday night. So let's jump into it. Rodimus Power, what's up? So first thing, first things first was the beauty. Let me let me get, because you always got to have a, a nitro convoy on hold. The beauty of they're getting rid of this. No more that I could go into, I could go into to, uh, Walmart and fist a nitro convoy, giggity. So um, we are going to be getting the return to plastic windows, the return to plastic trays, the return to dynamic packaging. Now, they didn't show us an example for Transformers. They pretty much had the ones that they're ready for. They have for G.I. Joe and Star Wars and the Marvel Legends stuff. But you could see through those examples how um, they really are putting an emphasis on showing the accessories and everything. So I would imagine like, you know, something like this with, with the Nitro Convoy override they they probably the little accessory that's hiding here would probably be more of a feature you with a, a bubble kind of tray going on so they're getting away from this thank goodness 
the amount of headaches and things that people have had to go through, especially with the clothes. I think the closed box stuff, honestly, was the bigger problem than so much this open box thing. I know people have different opinions because they were seeing heads that were stolen and stuff. I get that with the LeBron James craziness that was going on. And But um, I feel more the closed box stuff is probably the better news that it being it opened up and everything and being at a window again, because the amount of theft that was going on was pretty brutal. And I think probably Amazon was the one who was probably, probably, probably pushing them the most going like, Hey man, this is getting crazy. You know, people are returning leader class figures. And because we have such a huge turnover, you know, it comes in the re Amazon return. We got to right away, put it back into warehouse and then put it under the previously open section. And it's, it's a whole thing. And then they send it out again to another person. They open it up and there's a bootleg dollar store figure inside because someone swapped it. And because the process is so deep, they lose track of where it came from, who was the buyer, who ripped off who. And it kind of sucks. So either way, <clears throat> we're going uh, back to the window. Back to the window. And uh, this was... a. Uh, an email that I got from Hasbro Marketing and then TFW, I believe, and a few other websites also got their email from Hasbro Marketing about how they're going back. They're going back. And uh, it was for you, the fans, for you, the fans, which I mean, we, we let's be real. We really know what was going on, but we're going back to it. What's up, Mike? Um, so, yeah, that's some good stuff. At least I just hope I really hope we, we just we don't get an MSRP increase or something. I really hope that by removing the window and by having all these paper ties and stuff, it put down their costs. And of course, we didn't see a, a price decrease, but it put down their costs so they could get that little more cream at the top of profit. And now that they're going back to windows, at least they're they're back to square one again. So they don't have to increase a price, you know, an MSRP increase. I hope that's what I'm hoping. Um, I mean, transformers are already ridiculously expensive in Canada to begin with. So it is what it is. Showing some Montreal love. Well, thank you, my friend. It is the best place in the world to live, despite the price of transformer toys. But that's why I just, you know, when you live in Montreal, you could drive down to Plattsburgh. It is what it is. Oh, Princeton Phalanx gifted five memberships. Oh, Princeton, look at that. Look at that. You gave one to mayoral fabrication. Oh, my goodness. Mayoral, I know mayoral. Uh, you gave one to D.W. Brown, Sumkiak, Mayoral, Claude, and Blitz. All get memberships. Thank you, Princeton Phalanx, to gifting to everybody. Very cool, brother. Very cool. They get a membership for, I believe it's a month, usually. And they get to ask as many questions as they wish now that they are a green name. Um, but yeah, so we're going back to that. We're going back to the plastics. Hopefully it works Ready out. Hopefully it looks nice. Stopped. We get nice dynamic no packaging again. Cost. And uh, theft will be decreased exponentially, I hope. Although that didn't stop some of the things I was seeing. I was still seeing open package stuff Ready that stuff was being be stolen stopped. or swapped. So no we will see what happens with that. We will see. We will see. Michael Butcher, what's up, man? So... Um, that's pretty much it. We'll have updates on that as we get, uh, as we get more into it, but, uh, we will see what happens with that. I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe we're probably due for a Transformers fan round table with Hasbro. So I'll probably be on that with Evan, Mark, BMAC, and probably whoever their new second marketer is on top of BMAC. So, but that's probably going to be happening maybe after. Well, we'll talk about the dates later today. Anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll stay. We'll try to clue into all of that stuff. But either way, second piece of news. Let's talk about some Hot Wheels stuff, some updates and everything. Let's talk about the Transformers Hot Wheels skate line, which, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the first ever look at the Hot Wheels traditional 1x64 scale uh, Transformer stuff. So let's start with the skate stuff. Uh, this was found in Peru through the Peru listings of their archives. Um, James Hopkins, thank you for no being a six-month member, my friend. 
So this was uh, found in the Peru archives. And you know what? This is something, I mean, if you were a late 90s kid, an early 2000s kid, you know exactly the tech deck love. I mean, I think the very first one of these I ever owned, and I still own it to this day, was, and this really shows like when this, I got the Digimon one. There was, a, they did like a tech deck Digimon one where you got like a little skateboard with a stand and it had, and I had where, no, I think it was where Garurumon. Was it where Garurumon? I know it was Garurumon. I think it was Garurumon or where Garurumon was on the back of it. And you could change the wheels and everything. And that was like in 1999, I picked that up. And then you had all the tech deck dudes and all of those. So the fingerboard thing was always hip and happening and popular. And, you know, Hot Wheels started the Hot Wheels skate line not too long ago. They did it back in 2022. And they were doing a whole bunch of like tie-ins with Tony Hawk, of course, because that makes sense, obviously. And then they started doing, you know, they started doing the, uh, the, uh, the, the pop culture stuff. So they did Ninja Turtles, they did Marvel, and now we finally reach Transformers. And the Hot Wheels skate line, what makes it different from your typical fingerboards is this one's, these ones, they come with shoes and those shoes have magnets in them. And because the, the skateboard itself has a metallic plate in it, you could then like stick onto the board and do all kinds of tricks and everything. And while I dig the idea, I mean, the tech deck thing did well. And, you know, whenever they would do with other brands, there clearly is a collectible market for it. And it's kind of cool. And it's cool, too, because you could put it with your like, you know, hey, you get these are kind of to scale with like one by six scale figures. You know what I mean? So like, let's say like, excuse me, like your six inch Marvel figures or something. So you could have like a, a six inch Spider-Man or Deadpool figure holding a sound wave skateboard. And maybe even these shoes might even fit them a little bit. Who knows? I haven't tried that, but. The point is, they're pretty cool. I just, I, the only, my only complaint is just the the colors chose for for Starscream and and uh, Megatron for their shoes. Like my goodness, like the Soundwave is on point. The Soundwave looks good. The blues, the yellows, that's Soundwave. But like hot pink and light blue for Megatron and baby blue and some kind of greenish yellow for for Starscream. I don't know about those ones. I'm hoping these are maybe some early concept stock images. Maybe the final products are better, but chances are if I was a betting man, that ain't the case. So we will see. Uh, the Peru website listed these at an exchange rate of about $8. I wouldn't bank on that. That's just Peru to that. Um, I'm not sure. Like I probably should have checked at Walmart today when I was out and look at the other ones, but whatever they probably cost right now for the other ones at Walmart of the skate line, be it the TMNT, the Marvels or whatever, that's probably what these are going to cost too. They're paying a license fee. And so if they're paying a license fee to, let's say, you know, Marvel or the, um, the TMNT stuff to Nickelodeon, they're probably paying the same licensing fee also to Hasbro. And it's probably in the same MSRP and pricing. That's the way I would logically deduce it. So if you're curious how much these are going to cost you, Go to your Walmart, Toys R Us, Target, whatever it is you got. And, uh, oh, here we go. Star Warrior says they're about $4. Well, there you go. Well, that's why, because it was 8 bucks with Exchange with Peru. But I know that South America and a lot of different areas pay more for their toys than they do locally, like we do here in Canada and the USA. So, um, yeah, it's it's something where, there you go, 4 bucks. That's not bad, though. If it's $4, I mean, damn. Man, I'll pick up, like, the Soundwave for 4 bucks. So I could have like a, you know, a six inch figure holding like a sound wave, uh, sound wave skateboard. That's pretty cool. Then I know, like, I know like the, the tech deck dudes back in the day, I used to buy those cause they had all the transformer, like homage ones. And those were like really cheap. Those were like really, really cheap back in the day. And they came with like a bendy figure and stuff. So either way, check these out. And then of course, on the bottom, we got here, the one by 64 scale bumblebee that we're seeing for the first time. So we talked about this in the past that there is going to be a case assortment of what's called Transformer Mix Transformer stuff of the 1x64 scale Hot Wheels stuff. And it's something where they essentially have stuff planned. A lot of weird molds are in that mix, a Fiat, you know, all kinds of weird vans and stuff, stuff that really doesn't match Transformers. The one that did make sense was, of course, the classic Volkswagen Bug, which was the short-packed treasure hunt, which right away, let me tell you guys, 
What this bumblebee you're looking at might be very difficult to get because now you have to go up against Hot Wheels collectors that are going to be hunting for this guy too. And this image actually comes courtesy of a treasure hunt chase treasure collector of Hot Wheels stuff. And so he managed to get one. He probably broke a case early to show it off and everything. So the bumblebee is going to be four per case. All the others are going to be five per case. So the bumblebee is going to be the short packed one here. And uh, yeah, we will see. We will see how these turn out. Uh, no promises on the quality. The bumblebee looks pretty good. It's Hot Wheels. Good, good, nice dumbbell wheels on it. Good little mags. I mean, I was kind of hoping that they'd reveal more during the Hot Wheels live stream yesterday. But they they spent more talking about the history of the brand, and rightfully so. I think they want to really build up Mattel, so I don't blame them. We got a gold super chat from Zach Librand. How you doing, Zach? Tandem question. Who would you like to see as the next five Titan classes? Also, do you think one of the Titans art next year might be one of the primes we haven't seen mentioned as a Nexus Prime? Um, well, we'll start first with uh, the the next five I'd like to see. I mean, when I say what I would like to see is a little different than what logically would make sense. Like, we'll go with what logically makes sense that they should do. Part of it also would be stuff I'd like to see. But, I mean, you do the Axelon that transforms, the, the obviously the Maximal ship, the Dark Side to be a, a, a cover of that too. So you got two right there. Um, when you dive deeper into like, let's say other kinds of big transformer stuff sooner or later, then you fall into trademarks that need to be refreshed. Now a Scorponok, you don't have to worry too much because you have a beast wars character. You have a movie character. You could throw that trademark elsewhere. But when you get into like, let's say Fort Max, Fort Max is actually going to have a reissue soon. They're actually doing a reissue of Titan class Fortress Maximus just because they have to refresh the trademark, but they don't want to make a new product. So they're going to refresh the old one and put it out there as a Hasbro Pulse thing. And that'll be that. So Fort Max is another one that you kind of have to use your noodle and go like, oh, well, OK. Omega Supreme is probably going to be due for something at some point. If we fall into an Omega Supreme, maybe we'll have an animated Omega Supreme. The animated stuff seems to be hitting very well. If they want to do an animated o Omega Supreme that turns into the arc from animated that'd be pretty rad people would probably dig that same thing like we just got a metroplex two years ago but if you say five here that gives me five years that gives me four years of a trademark refresh a classic g1 metroplex probably at some point will be rehashed all over again Trypticon is another one that's definitely due they could probably throw that somewhere do another Trypticon mold that's outside of the john warden era now sculpted within the mark and evan era of Trypticon, and then who knows where they'll go from there. So I don't know how many I just named right there, but another one that I would have liked to see is Majin's Eric. And Majin's Eric was an obscure movie only one appearance character from the Beast Wars second movie. And he was this like weird demonic kind of transformer that turned into an aircraft carrier. So that would have been another really cool one that I could see if they're, if they're really clever with tidal wave and they could figure something out which i don't know how they do it but you know they work magic that's another one and then of course you fall at the end to like primus and like you just said here for your second question um you know with the primes you think that it might be nexus prime i think it's going to be primus i think that primus would be the one that makes sense with the primes and a nexus prime or not even so much a Nexus Prime, because I think Nexus Prime is something that we'll get maybe in 2026 after we get a few more combiner molds under our belt. We do know that we're getting the aerial bots. We do already have, you know, some car guys. I'm pretty sure if they get a couple more under their belt, they could mix and match, and then we could get a proper Nexus Prime, and that'll be that. So that's kind of the way that I see it with that one. Um, and then, of course, the commander class will be Silverbolt. That's 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 just kind of a given in my mind. Um, yeah, and that'll be that. And then, of course, the Nexus Prime, the centerpiece will be a heat wave. So at some point when they feel they got heat wave out of their system, because they are we have a heat wave coming up, actually, that's going to be a Voyager class based off of the rescue bots. But if they want to do another heat wave, they'll be able to do it when they do the Nexus Prime because heat wave is the centerpiece. So that's kind of like my 3D you know, chess, inside baseball, really thinking too deep about it kind of thing. So we will see.
We will see. Thank you for the $10 gold super chat, my friend. Definitely good. I mean, Aaron, I remember back in the day, always envisioned all of the original 13 as like Titan class figures. Like they're just, they're taller than everybody, you know? And it's like, I mean, let me just pull up, pull this down for a sec. Like I, I keep this on my desk. I always keep uh, the, I think this is the third version of the protoform Optimus, but also technically does double duty as Prima. And uh, I like using that third version because it has like the written, the ancient Cybertronian written on it. And I find that really kind of, puts that in there and I put the sword from the 3D printed um 3D printed uh star saber with the matrix in the hilt and it's nice and cool. I, I dig that. So I keep all the gods of fiction on my tower. You know, you know Dragon Ball Kami and everything like that. So I keep them there. Yeah. And uh yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. That's kind of the way I see it. Stopped. No Princeton Phalanx cost. with the YouTube member question. Do you think there will be a third tier HasLab? I think so. I think that they're just kind of waiting for the next time they want to do a, a fan stream. It's like, I don't like the last time that we had a fan stream that like, let's just kind of paint a picture here. So Deathsaurus, which was our last HasLab, uh, they didn't announce the tier three until after the HasLab was over. And they perfectly timed the HasLab to end like the day after that Desorth ended. So they made sure to kind of do that announcement together. And of course, you know, they didn't have to announce it before because Desorth was already backed. So it's kind of the same thing here. The Omega Prime was already backed heavily. They didn't have to announce the tier three to get more people to back it. They were probably very happy with what they got. And they're probably like, you know what? This will be the perfect thing to announce at another live stream that might be happening this Thursday, maybe potentially something that's going to be announced at another date, which I'll get into in a moment. So there's a few different things, but what it'll be, I, I firmly believe judging based off of, and I always keep them nearby because they're so cool, but you know, these dudes, you know, micro masters, these are all the, uh, the has lab ones. I love micro masters. They were some of my favorite transformers as a kid growing up. So I always keep these guys nearby. So either we're going to get something that's like, oh, you know, let's take some pre-existing micro master molds that we already have, put some new tooling. Because even like some of the new tooled ones, like when you look at Boater here, you know, Boater was a brand new tooling, but there was like shared tooling that was partials from other stuff. So the way that I see it is, you know, they'll they'll take some of those like tons of different micro masters that we got during Siege, use some of the parts and then tool a whole bunch of new things, and then we'll get some of the, well, I'm gonna show the spy changers over here, but the spy changers, man, you, can't, you can barely see them. All the all the robots in the skies, car robot stuff is back in the the east wing of the convention, uh, the convention, the, the collection. Uh, oh, Aaron's here? Where's up there? There's Aaron, what's up, Aaron? Aaron did a fantastic live stream yesterday. Um, but so yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's something where I imagine they'll probably do spy changers. That's what I would think. I would like to see like Ichon, like they make a little Ichon figure using some G.I. Joe parts or something, you know, take like a G.I. Joe figure, like one of their, their O-ring ones, swap some parts, do a little three inch Ichon figure that's articulate. I mean, I dig that. That would be so like, that's like what Bakan used to do back in the day. But I mean, that's, I think that's a little asking too much. I think, um, taking a pre-existing MicroMaster and working some magic with that would just be so much easier and people would be happy. You know, do, um, do, uh, I'm going to use the Japanese names though. It's Artfire. What do they call them? I think they call them, they called them Hotshot in America, but Artfire would be cool. Like the leader of the Spy Changers and uh, maybe Eagle Killer, which was uh, Mirage only because I like Formula Ones. <laughs> Or uh, Rev. Rev was called Rev, I believe, in both regions. I believe. I think so. Oh, no, I think it was called Crosswise. Anyways, and he got Wars. Wars is really cool, too. I like Wars. Wars is a really cool design. Either way, I mean, it'd be cool if we get all six. I mean, I'm just, I'm just imagining two. But Billy B says Spy Changers to be a deluxe. I would really dig Spy Changers as a deluxe. But, I mean, that's that's an investment of six different characters minimum to do deluxes on where the, the deluxe space is limited to begin with. Ooh, I don't know. 
I would dig that. It'd be really cool to get like a full size. And I mean, great. They'd be so easy. Like again, Eagle killer, AKA, you know, Mirage. I mean, or what's it called? Crosswise. Ah, it's been so long, you know, those totally could be then repainted into other characters and pre-existing characters. So we will see. We will see. Um, but yeah, so that's it for the Hot Wheels update. We will we will uh, figure the rest out later. Uh, this was something that dropped into my lap recently uh, yesterday. This was t making the rounds. Uh, there was an image that popped up. It's funny. We were just holding this figure in our hand today. Um, there was an image that popped up of a Speedia 500 collection override, aka Nitro Convoy, that had a cyber planet key that was scaled perfectly to how it should be with the new cyber planet keys. Now, this led to some speculation by people saying this confirms that Hotshot is the car Hotshot in United or maybe the Transformers Prime, Generations Prime line that we're going to be getting. I, there's a few things I need to take apart here with that. Uh, number one, and I probably should have made images. Maybe I'll save this for a separate segment on Monday, but I will give, I'll, I will say this. The cyber planet keys are all with the new transformer stuff, the star scream, the Cybertron star scream we just got and the, the, uh, cannonball, which coincidentally Aaron talked about both yesterday. Go check that out. Uh, they're both gang molded to the toy. So a clear plastic, uh, red there is sharing with the clear plastic that is available on the, uh, the override. So the, that cockpit in the front of the, uh, the car there. So it's something where if you look at, you know, a Cybertron hotshot, there's no translucent red on him. It's all translucent yellow. And the cyber planet keys were actually in the original toys were manufactured separately from the toys themselves. That's why the cyber planet keys could be whatever color they need to be. That's why they could be included separately from toys. That's why they could be two in a pack, three in a pack, one in a pack, because they weren't on the same mold sprue as the toy itself. So where these new cyber planet keys are part of it. What I personally think we're looking at here is an individual from the factory assembling an override and guess what was already on the sprue with the override a cyber planet key and the translucent plastic that was clear on this override here is on the same mold sprue as the cyber planet key it was assembled they have the uh the cyber planet key here for this override which tells me a future override repaint or a partial, whatever they're going to do to that override that makes a new character, even if they do something wacky, will have a cyber planet key. Is it going to be the black black uh, nitro convoy? Is it going to be the, the nemesis override, override GTS, if you will? We don't know, but definitely there'll be something. And that does tell me at least that this mold has a cyber planet key on it. Um, Archer Monster says, yep, the keys were not with the toys. How did you know that? Aaron, come on now. Aaron, Aaron. Archibald. Aaron, how did, how, come on. Who are you talking to here? You just got to use a little logic. Let me, let me, let me just grab the, let me grab one of the old boys here. And I just dropped his accessory. Anyways. Now, his key was a red clear key. If it was on the same mold, where's the clear red on this? You know? Clear translucent there, which you hit with paint decos on the other side to give it some. And you got the clear there. Where would the red be, Mr. Archer? And here, ugh, this is how I store my uh, Cyber Planet keys. Fun fact, if you want to not lose it, get uh, Pog pages or coin pages. And then just keep them like this. <laughs> That's how I do it. And there they all go. Oh, well. Ugh. But yeah. That's how I store all my Cyber Planet keys. You know? Who fell? Oh, these were the movie ones. Yeah, it's the movie Cyber Planet key. Anyways. It is what it is. But yeah. They were done separately. You know? Because, like, 
you would have Cyber Planet keys that were given as like store exclusives from Japanese, like I think uh, JustCo in Japan, they'd they'd give them separately. You'd have like the big the big uh, King Star Scream came with two Cyber Planet keys because why not? You know, there was no hard and fast rule with those. Those were always sculpted separately completely. So, uh, you know. Or I was in the factory back in, you know, 1994, 95, and Aaron didn't realize it. One or the other, you know. Maybe I was in the factory when I was in college. It is what it is. Um, where are we at? I've lost my train of thought a little bit. Maybe a new head. Yeah, well, that's the way I see it is you could take this. You could... Um, you know, you could give it a, a different face sculpt and do an override GTS, the black repaint. Or if they really want to just, it, you know, they've been doing crazy retools now, that crew. I mean, they could they could probably make a brand new character that we're not even thinking about. Maybe do some other kind of design. You know, we you can't just look and just kind of do a digital repaint anymore in your head. Because now it's like they'll figure out a way to make two brand new legs that then make two a completely different front of the vehicle that then leads to it being a completely different transformer we didn't even think about. Like you do something that's more Formula One inspired and you make those legs that, and then all of a sudden you get Road King or Slapdash, you know, the Power Master. And then that Cyber Planet key could be a Power Master. Like there's, there's, there's so much creativity that could exist there. So, uh... Where are we at? Where are we at? We got a gold super chat of a hundred Mexican pesos from Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Um, wh uh, why appears that Hasbro can't use the main line of Rise of the Beast figures for any remolds? Uh, why do they continue to use the horrible Air Razor Kingdom mold for the bird bot instead of the beautiful main line Rise of the Beast one? Uh, the, the Hasbro stuff that's done from rise of the beast is actually done by the west coast crew of guys along with takara um i remember evan talked about that it's called the hasbro studios crew which is all in la it was like 15 minutes from one of the past tf cons back in the day and uh <laughs> proto man was in the sweatshop oh he was sweaty all right if it was back then that would have been china too that would have been before vietnam um my days in vietnam getting different kinds of flashbacks. Uh, but yeah, it it's just, I, I'm pretty sure there's some kind of exclusivity. I think they don't want to mix the peanut butter and the chocolate. I can't think of any, because like, obviously when you look at the old movie era stuff, you know, it was the Wild West. You could take Michael Bay molds, you could throw it here and, and make them classics characters or vice versa. You could take like Cybertron stuff and, you know, or like cyber planet key stuff and then turn that into movie characters, vice versa. It was a, it was a different kind of situation today. It's weird. It's very weird. That, like it's very rare, but at the same time, look at the studio series stuff. You know, they, they take studio series jazz and that somehow ends up in mainline stuff and exclusives and repaints. So I don't really know what it is. I think that they're trying to avoid maybe using movie aesthetic stuff because it really leans in its own direction. Maybe there's some kind of studio obligations. I don't know. I don't know. This this is me just totally shooting from the hip because it's very it is weird. I do agree that a lot of the movie design stuff in studio series exclusively hasn't really found its place outside of movie centric stuff. It'll be repainted, but it'll still be movie stuff. Where they won't take uh, Studio Series Deluxe Class, you know, Movie 2007 Ratchet and repaint it into Red Alert or whatever, you know. It's very bizarre. I do agree. I do agree. It is weird. Um, I don't have a problem with that Air Razor, though. I don't think it's too bad. I mean, maybe because the, the premium repaint really, you know, saves it in a lot of ways. Um, but hey, I mean, we got Filch out of it, so I'm not going to complain. That's like a miracle, in my opinion, that Filch even has a toy outside of a tiny Titan figure, which is like, you know, two, two, two paint apps and no articulation. Uh, but thank you for the uh, 100 peso super chat, my friend. Uh, T Formers 2002 with the gold super chat of $10. 
Perfect example of some keys not being on the mold. Universe. Yeah, that's true. Uh, someone like Soundwave coming with Planet X uh, being repainted into Blaster and using a generic Autobot key. A bunch were like that. Yeah, it was it was a grab bag. It really was. I mean, when you look at, let's get to, you just mentioned like some of those more weirder ones. You know, when you get to some of the more weirder ones there, you know, they were just throwing paint schemes on any of those. Or uh, some of the other ones here. They've got some of the... Because a lot of the, the movie ones, I actually left them with the figure because I like like some of them. They're really nice. But no, yeah, they were they were completely on their own sprue. They were their own thing. They had little codes on the back of it. If you had the American ones back in the day, the American ones had little codes on the back. The Japanese ones didn't. Um, I like them. I mean, obviously, they, they weren't uh, mini cons because that's that's literally what they were replacing. It was just, hey, you know, the mini con feature is going to be more expensive because of oil costs and everything that were happening during that transition from Energon to Cybertron. But at the same time, you know, it 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 does the same play unlock feature that a Minicon would have done. That's why some of the the Cyber Planet keys, uh, where's the ones that have uh, a Minicon port on the back of them? Some of them do. I have to find some of them. What some of them do. Uh, where, 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 where? Anyways. Not going to waste your time looking for it, but some of them have a cyber, uh, they have the minicon port on it because they just activate with that. But yeah, I dig them. I dig them. I dig them. Uh, the blaster with the generic Autobot key. Yeah, I, I love that blaster. Like that was like the closest to an updated blaster figure in like 20 years up to that point. Because you had like, yeah, G1 blaster, you had his, his decoy from Japan, his little rubber decoy ki Kishi. Uh, you had the um, what do you call it? You had the 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 action master, and then I think that was it. That was it. And again, I have a soft spot for Blaster because he was my first Transformer. And then that that repaint of the Cybertron uh, Soundwave was like the first. Hey, Blaster updated, and it didn't look that great to be honest. But I mean, hey, I was excited about it because hey, that's like the first new Blaster toy in forever. So I was down for that. But I dig them. I dig them. Again, if you if you want a good way to store them, go to your local hobby shop and ask for some uh, coin pages. It's the easiest way to store these. Instead of ha and then you like you can even put like little labels on them because a lot of coin stuff you could put a label under it so you can label like which one goes with which and stuff. So little fun fact of collecting. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? We got a little derailed thanks to some beautiful super chats, but keep the super chats coming. They're always very helpful. Always very helpful. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Someone wrote, did you know that Override was a male in Galaxy Force? Brother, it's still Nitro Convoy to me. One of my top three favorite Transformer characters of all time. It's still a male character to me. Um, where are we at? Oh, yeah. OK, so next thing we're going to cover is uh, the next dates. So let's talk about dates because we got two of them. So here's the dates. Um, so March 28th coming up Thursday is uh, going to be our very last uh, Transformers Hasbro Pulse fan stream. And um, according to BMAC, it's going to be mostly licensing, marketing, uh, comic book stuff, publishing, uh, apparel. So I'm hoping that we might get something new outside of some of the more licensing kind of stuff. Cause I know like it's going to be, it's probably going to talk about the tops trading cards, maybe an update to that t-shirt stuff through different, you know, retail distributors and everything, but maybe we'll get again, maybe tier three will be revealed. Uh, BMAC did tease that there's something he's really excited about that he wants to show off that he really enjoys. So I don't know what that is. That could be anything, you know? So we'll see what happens with that. But that'll be March 28th, this Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then literally the next day and the whole weekend, 29, 30, and 31st is WonderCon, which then BMAC and Evan will be at. And on the Saturday... March 30th at WonderCon from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. at room 300E. If you're going to be there at WonderCon, um, you're going to have some reveals, more specifically Studio Series reveals there 
Obviously, we've seen 99% of them, but we are going to probably see for the first time the Studio Series 86 Swoop. I'm pretty sure that's the right move. I mean, you're going to be at a huge convention that's going to have tons of casual fans of Transformers. And if you're going to do a big worldwide reveal of one Transformer at this convention, you're going to go with the one that even the casual fans remember. People remember the Dinobots. Oh, the Dinobots were so cool from the 86 movie of G1. You know, so out of, if you looked at the roster of, of, uh, wave two stuff that they could potentially be revealing stuff that we all know, you know, the war for Cybertron sideswipe, the Bumblebee movie, Sunstreaker, the Voyager class, Bumblebee movie, um, shockwave, the 86 swoop is the smart move. So that's going to probably be revealed for the first time this, uh, this Saturday. So stay tuned for that. If it doesn't leak out early, hopefully <laughs> not that that would suck for them, but we will see what happens. Hopefully there'll be more that weekend. They'll probably have a display booth. So there's going to probably be some in-hand stuff in display too. Nicely done. We will see. We will see. But those are the two dates to make a note of because uh, that'll probably be a big driving force this week of uh, information for us this week in the Transformer world. Hopefully we'll learn more maybe from Hot Wheels, find out what's happening with that now that the cases have been opened. Mind you, the cases have only been opened just to get the, the treasure hunts, which is why the Bumblebee, but maybe we'll get to see images of the others too, and hopefully those are impactful and look really cool. We got a super chat for $2 from Alden Tolbert. Which TFA villain would you want to see brought back? Um, well... A Angry Archer would be really cool because then we could finally get an Aaron Archer figure. <laughs> uh, fun fact. Might as well show it. So in my display, and by the way, the, the idea for this actually came from Derek Wyatt. So Derek, Derek worked on the Teen Titans toy line um, and the Teen Titans TV show before he worked on Transformers Animated. So he had a lot of, he was collecting a lot of the, the DC stuff at the time. And I remember Derek told me, he's like, if you want an angry Archer figure, okay, let me show you. If you want an angry Archer figure, this is in my display. You get the The Batman Brave and the Bold uh, figure of Green Arrow. And because of the style that the show was done in, it's done very much like the angry Archer. All you need to put is a little, little like mole like Aaron has and everything on there. And well, see, he's not left handed, though. That's the problem. You got to make him left handed because Aaron's left handed. I'm left handed, too, actually. So if you want to get the closest you could get to an official Angry Archer figure, and this is Derek Wyatt's, you know, seal of approval. That's the one you got to pick up. He comes in a two pack with Sportsmaster. So you'll have to, uh, you know, have to figure out what to do with that Sportsmaster afterwards. But so uh, check that out if you want. But I would love um, I love that one. Slow Mo would be another cool one, too. Slow Mo was based off of a Hasbro uh, Hasbro staff member. Uh, what was the other one? The Princess there. Headmaster would be cool if he could be an actual transforming headmaster. There's a lot of cool villains there. So a lot of cool ones. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? We got another super chat. Mototron Prime with the $5 super chat. Hey, Proto, do you think we'll eventually get an Origins 3 pack of B, Jazz, and Wheeljack and Cartoon Deco? By the way, I'm Abraham. Change the chat name. Oh, there we go. Well, I guess you have a new branding, my friend. Um, I, I don't know about that one. So the thing with those is those are all Target exclusives. So if we do see a three pack, you're going to have to probably Megatron either they'll be target be exclusives again as a three no pack, which I don't cost. think target would want to redo the same thing again, even if there has been some time since that first origins B. Uh, but then you have to wait until that, that exclusivity cools off before they would be able to do a three pack and the wheel Jack just came out. So, you know what I mean? I'm just kind of wrapping around the business side of it. Um, in cartoon colors, eh, how much different would it be really? You know, I think you take the B, you do something clever with that. You, you have, first of all, you do like an obvious cliff jumper one, and then you could have some fun and do like, I, I, I put a digibash on my Twitter of you paint it all in white and you could do the EDC based off of Marissa Fairborn's character uh, vehicle because the Bumblebee and that looks very similar. The Jazz, that one's easy. You could then do a Prowl and a, and a, uh, 
a, a, a blue streak or a smoke screen out of that one. The wheel jack, it's the same thing. You, you could then do the Marlboro's wheel jack, AKA exhaust. You could be a little more fun and do slicer if you want. There's a few repaints there, but again, because they're target exclusives and they're still pretty fresh, we'll see. We'll see. We will see. We will see. Um, that one's a tough one. Whenever you have those like exclusives, you got to wait a few years before you could pull the trigger on those. And to do those as a three pack with the wheel jack, so, st so still new, I don't know. And again, think about it, a Voyager and two deluxes in a three pack, that's going to be like almost a hundred bucks if it's a target exclusive, if there's not no savings involved. So that's going to be an expensive box set too. Would Target want to invest in something like that on something that they already kind of put into it? You know what I mean? Kind of, you have to kind of like look at the deeper layers of it. Uh, Prince of Comics 59, remold the Origins Bumblebee into a Batman Batwing crossover. That would be cool. I would, I would love finally an official Batman crossover that isn't just third party. That would be awesome. Um, so. What else? What else? What else? Valiant became a mini con member. Thank you, Valiant, for joining. And welcome to the madness. So that's it more or less for news, unfortunately. Uh, we will be talking about other stuff. Got a few things here and there we're going to be talking about, um, which will probably be a little bit of our conversation for the rest of the evening. We still have an hour left and four minutes. Amazingly, we only had three pieces of news and we still were able to stretch it out in a lot of ways uh so let's just do some uh sponsorship stuff and then we'll get to the other super chats of course symbiote studios this is the new symbiote Studios spread if you go to the website right now now that we got the hot rod and the ultra magnus available on there i'm rocking the uh the grimlock today and a beautiful catnip bravo pin um but yeah, symbiotestudios.com, plush pins and t-shirts of all the Transformer variety. And of course, all the rest. This is the spread. This is everything that we have that has been sold and or sold out throughout the years. We have a convention exclusive coming to San Diego Comic-Con. Stay tuned for that. That'll be pretty cool. Have something to join your official Transformer Slag podcast plush to go with it. Uh, so we got a convention exclusive coming up as well as others for 2024. So get ready for that. Go pick up all the brand new ones that have just dropped on there. Already starting to ship out. I know that uh, Fair Lady Z, one of the big Hot Rod fans, just picked up hers. So just be like, uh, be like Anastasia and rock out and pick one also. What else do we got? We also got their other stuff. So here's a few updates if you're into the pony stuff. There's a few new pony editions, two of all the other Hasbro brands. Otherwise, the G.I. Joe and Power Ranger stuff is also available. The Power Ranger pins are on sale. So pick those up while you can. As for the Toy Armada, tomorrow... So Aaron's here. So Aaron, we were uploading the... I was uploading the segment last night. I started it around, I don't know, I want to say like 3 p.m.-ish was uploading the segments, walked away from the computer, and then Aaron did his live stream, and then I come back to the segment, and the, the upload was cut off. So apparently, we all we could all grow and learn from this. Apparently, when you're uploading a huge segment, you can't do a live stream at the same time, because if you do a live stream, when you finish the live stream, it cuts off the upload of the upload. So I'm going to have to re-upload it tonight. And so hopefully tomorrow in the morning, you'll have a brand new Toy Armada segment that will be coming. Uh, little hint, it is the 20th anniversary of something. That's all I'm going to say. So it's the celebrating 20th anniversary behind the scenes creation of a little something, something. So uh, check that out. That'll be tomorrow, a brand new, I believe it's an hour and 10 minutes segment on the Toy Armada with Aaron Archer and this ugly mug. So go check that out. Uh, Aaron already did a live stream yesterday. So if you want a good hour and so of him talking about the creation of Cannonball, as well as the Cybertron Starscream with behind the scenes stuff with that, he actually shows some brand new uh, images that he flashes on the screen quickly, which you got to keep it under wraps, my friend. But uh, a lot of good stuff is on there. So go check that out too after you're done hanging out with me tonight. 
And as always, go pick up Aaron's other stuff, The Art of Transforming Robots, Volume 2 Color Edition, still available on archermonster.com forward slash shop for $20. And if you put in an extra 15 bucks, you could get a custom sketch of whatever you like from the man. And of course, he put some brand new instructions, painting photos up. I believe some that I put here have already sold, unfortunately. That's how quickly these went. <laughs> it's okay, Aaron. It's okay. I didn't know. I, you know what? When have I ever double uploaded something? You know what I mean? So like I was uploading your your thing and then you went live. And when you, because what happens is when you finish the live stream, it then uploads your live stream as a video file. And well, it cut it off, but whatever. It doesn't make a difference. We'll just upload it again. It's not a big deal. I'll do it overnight. Won't affect me. It doesn't matter. Sunday's my day off. I could chillax and upload it. Everything will be good. But go check that out. Go pick up some brand new Posca painting instructions on archermonster.com forward slash shop. I believe the Devastator is sold. When I did this image, I think the Devastator was still available. But I think the Devastator is sold right now. Go check out a whole bunch of the others. Go through them. They sell extremely quickly, guys. Pick them up while you can. And check that out, yo. Archermonster.com forward slash shop. Thank you again, Symbiote Studios, for sponsoring. And go check out Aaron's stuff, too. So. What else are we going to talk about? What else are we going to talk about? Um, one of the things that I got in the mail today, and it was, I, I'm telling you, Mondo probably planned this on purpose. My Mondo Wolverine animated uh, X-Men came in the mail today uh, with removable jacket and everything. This thing is spectacular. These are their premium 12-inch dolls, not even action figures. Um, and this came literally the exact same day as X-Men 97 dropped, which I know we don't usually talk about too much non, non, uh, transformer stuff on the pod, but, uh, I just want to say what it was absolutely fantastic. Granted, it's only the first two episodes. They might completely swerve us and it's the rest of it is terrible, but so far it's been fantastic. Absolutely loved it. It was very good. Uh, the guy that they got to replace Norm Spencer, the original voice actor of uh, of uh, Cyclops, did a fantastic job. He sounds really good. Uh, Wolverine. I, I understand Cal is is older now. Look, there's it's it's been like 25 years, actually more than that. It's been like 27 years since a lot of those people had to do those voices. So I kind of get it. You know what I mean? Like I like Cal is an older guy, so he doesn't really sound like he used to. Same thing with with Rogue. They got the original voice actress. She's older now, so for her to still sound young and spry 25 years later. Look, I'm pretty sure if you recorded my voice 25 years later, it'd sound different too. So it is what it is. What's up, Lee J? Lee J is one of my bros from Montreal. What's up, Lee J? Lee J. Anyway, so yeah, but this this is this is awesome. They sent me this one and the Jubilee. I haven't opened up the Jubilee yet. They've been sending me all of these. They're so cool, and um, yeah, they're really cool. Like it's really cool because you could you pop off the arms essentially, and then you could uh, take off the jacket, and then you put on like arms that match the flannel because we're Canadian. A eh? um, looks really good. The interchangeable hands, the claws. What's cool is you actually pick the claws so they don't get bent. They actually come in a tray. Um, different interchangeable faces, super articulated. Go check these out. Everyone was talking about the Rogue one because the Rogue one had, they had that cake, if you know what I mean. Um, I have that coming in the mail too, but these are fantastic. So if you're a fan of what's popping with X-Men, go check those, those out. Mondo isn't a sponsor. They've just been really nice to me. <laughs> They've just been really cool to me with their stuff. So even the Batman stuff they do is fantastic too. Um, but yeah, uh, let's see, Mikey and Louie with the question. We were still watching the original to build up to the season on season two right now. Season two and season three are probably the peak of the X-Men show because that's when you get into those Chris Claremont Phoenix saga stories. So, I mean, I mean, we're even getting Chris Claremont stuff now with X-Men 97. So it's... The man's a the man's a legend. The man's amazing. Uh, Billy B, uh, like Judd, uh, like Judd Nelson and entire and, Ty and uh, Titans Return versus the '86 movie. Totally, Billy B. One hundred percent, night and day. 
I mean, if you didn't tell me it was Judd Nelson, I would have never guessed it was Judd Nelson. And I got to look, I got to meet Judd Nelson in real life at BotCon 2016. And look, he's not the young, you know, teenager bender anymore. Like he literally did Breakfast Club. And then two years later, he did the 86 movie, you know, like you're you're not going to get that guy, you know, from St. Elmo's Fire. <laughs> you know, you're not going to get that dude. Uh, time has passed and it's the same thing even though Wolverine had a gruff kind of voice to begin with it was still Cal who was like significantly younger when he was voicing Wolverine back then and it's very clear if you were doing this voice back then when you were young imagine how it's gonna sound now when you're really old you know if I have one complaint about it, and it's it's such a silly complaint the only complaint that I had was they were really playing up southern rogue like every line that she had was was always like a southern you know euphemism or something for it's like you're in this room like a cat full of rocking chairs and then she's in another room oh this is like my time with my grand it's like okay we got it like the, the third time but then the fourth and the fifth time over two episodes all right dial it down a bit but otherwise everything was great thought it was fantastic music was great the animation it's hit or miss but i mean it's definitely it's definitely more fluid than what the Acom Studios stuff was. Acom, like, keep in mind, season three of G1 that was like very badly animated by Acom Studios. That was the same company that years later did the first couple of seasons of X Men, and yeah. So when you look at that very last season of X Men, which Acom then outsourced to their lower division in Korea, and it all kind of hit the fan. It is what it is. It truly is old man Logan. It really is. Um, T Forbes 2002. Honestly, even if it's TF, uh, TF animated, it's harder to hear Judd with Rodimus. Yeah. Well, to me, you know, you like, I really like uh, the, I forget the name of the guy. Hold on. I have his autograph, oddly enough, Ugh. but I, I didn't get it. Ugh. I didn't get it in person. Larry, Larry picked it up for me, but uh, the voice actor, for uh, for Hot Rod in Cyberverse. Uh, he does a very good job. I kind of like his Hot Rod. Giggity. Um, I kind of like uh, how it came out, his voice. So, I, you know, I think that, you know, you reach a point where, yeah, it's cool to get the original voice actors, but if they can't do the job, it's better to get someone who could do the job. In the same way that, like, you know, you could have a favorite sports star, but, you know, it, you can't put Wayne Gretzky on the ice today and go, you're the greatest of all time. You could still do this, right? No, nah, you're going to want to, a young guy in the NHL would probably like, you know, s you know, skate circles around him. And it's the same thing to me sometimes, like Peter Cullen still is able to pull off Optimus. You know, Frank Welker is still more or less able to pull off a, a comparable, uh, you know, um, even even as even as Megatron is kind of starting to go, but that's a tough voice to do. But it's you know blood on the mic as they call it for some voice actors. Travis Arts, thank you, is the name of the uh, Cyberverse uh, hot rod. One day I'll meet him in person. One day I'll meet him in person. But uh, you know, to me, if, if you could get someone that could do it just as well you know a good sound alike someone who's talented give a young voice actor a chance to kind of like spread their wings it's cool yeah you want to honor the old the uh, the old guard and everything and you want to give them gigs too but sometimes it's like you know it's tough it's tough uh to do that you know it's tough the, the voice actress who played jubilee in the original show uh, she was Lunette from Big Comfy Couch back in the day, and she did a whole bunch of other stuff. She passed on the role so that someone of Asian descent could get the gig. So, you know, there's examples of that even in the show. J.R. Mina, what's up, J.R. Mina from the Philippines? What's up, everyone? Just dropping by quickly. Family's going out for a while, and just, lis uh, just listen to the upload of the live stream later. Have a good one, y'all. Thank you, J.R. Thank you for swinging by, my friend. But I dig it. It's really good. Great, uh, great turnout. I hope they don't, uh, I just hope they don't swerve us in episodes, you know, like episodes one and two are amazing. Thus it gets great word of mouth. 
that that way people then get a Disney Plus account. Not that I watched it on Disney Plus, wink, wink. Um, <laughs> you know, it's one of those things. Uh, it's one of those things where, you know, it is what it is. Uh, 20, uh, 20 Mexican pesos from Sarah. I don't speak hockey. I'm from the jungle. Well, Mexico has an amazing wrestling scene with the luchadores. And uh, so then uh, to give you a better example, you wouldn't want to put in the ring Hulk Hogan today or Mil Mascaris. You know, actually, is Ms. Mil Mascaris still alive? You know, you wouldn't want to put those guys in the ring. Mil Mascaris was a luchador wrestler back in the back in the 70s and 60s. Um and say like, hey, man, you were the greatest of all time. Go at it. You know, sometimes you got to give the young guys an opportunity. You know, Allison Court. She was Claire Ridfield. Yeah, there you go. That's yeah, true. She was Claire in Resident Evil. You're right. That's true. I always know her as Lunette from Big Comfy Couch because I remember watching X-Men as a kid. And then Big Comfy Couch would be on like, I think like on in the mornings during summer. And the voices were so similar that I couldn't get it out of my head. It's a very Canadian show. Um, so more Transformer X-Men crossovers. I, I would dig that personally. I mean, if they could do some good ones. Uh, what's for dinner, Proto? I got samosas today that I'm going to be having. Got a whole bunch of them. Looking forward to that. I love samosas. Super spicy ones, which are good for you. So I'm going to have that. And then tomorrow we're making Japanese curry. So looking forward to that. Carrots, potatoes, beef, uh, beef uh, cubes with the Japanese curry sauce, a little bit of spice that feeds you for the whole week because we make a big vat of it. And then that feeds us for the whole week. Love it. That's tomorrow. You're making me making me drool right now. Just thinking about it. Mm. Love Japanese curry. You have it with rice on the side, some brown rice good stuff um motor prime if if they don't pull a bait and switch yeah well that's my worry is that you know the first two episodes knock it out of the park they fired the showrunner which was like ooh, that was a weird move so something happened with the showrunner where they got rid of him so i think that part of me and this is just conspiracy brain going like oh no is it really good at the beginning and then they're going to swerve us and it's going to be terrible later. But everyone already got their Disney Plus accounts. I don't know. And that's why I don't watch that way. I don't like Disney. I'm a lifelong Marvel fan, but I don't like Disney. So I find my ways. Um, Mike and Louie, Fortress Maximus, Xavier <laughs> mentioned crossover. You know what? In the entire history of X-Men, I think there's only been two uh, X-Mansion play sets ever which is kind of crazy when you think about it they did the danger room x mansion play set with toy biz and then they did like a little poly pocket kind of thing um with toy biz and that is it they've never done anything else i'm pretty sure there's like a statue display of part of the danger room or something but in general they've never done anything so that would be at least something different Prince of Phalanx 59, trying to quit smoking, going on four weeks now. Congratulations, my friend. Congratulations. Let me tell you something. I lived with a smoker, and it is not cool. And between me and my poor father and our toy collections having to deal with that, uh, it wasn't fun. But I'll tell you, you're saving yourself a lot of time and energy, money, and health by avoiding smoking. I always say, um, you know, as someone who lived with a smoker, Sometimes smoking is just due to stress. People get stressed out and then they want to smoke. So, you know, stress could be a, a trigger. Sometimes it's just they want to hold something in their hand. This is just a screwdriver, you know, but it's like, so sometimes you might just need to hold something. Oh, there goes the cyber planet key. Um, you know, so just try not to let uh, temptation get you. I, um, chewing gum might help. Sometimes people just want to have a minty sensation in their throat and cigarette smoke would sometimes, you know, the back of their throat, it would give them that sensation. Anything you can to avoid having to start up, my man, because you're, you're going to be saving money. You're going to be doing good for your health. You're going to be doing good for your collection. 
because I don't know a single cigarette smoker that hasn't ruined their collection. Let me tell you, I bought so many collections that reek because they just, you could literally type, type chain smoker at Proto Man on Twitter. I've taken photos of collections that I've bought from cigarette smokers, and I would put side-by-side -side photos of my personal figure next to theirs. And you could just see how much they ruin the toys. And you don't notice it unless you put it side-by-side. -side. Ridiculous. I did a whole segment on it, even on the podcast once. Not a fan of it personally. Never will be. Good for you, sir. Good for you. Uh, Mikey and Louie, uh, you get to be a transformer as a smoker, though. <laughs> you transform your lungs into mush. You get an evil black repaint. That's what you do. You get to be an evil black repaint. You get a nice skin-colored kind of pinkish lung, and then you smoke for a bit, and then it's a black repaint. There you go. And then you suffer from GPS, and it breaks down. Ain't it the truth? Uh, Princess Phalanx 69, I've never smoked inside. I've always been outside. Well, good for you too, because that means you're also, if you have loved ones or anything, they don't have to deal with that. That's something that unfortunately, like, fortunately, my mom smoked and she was one of those 80s mom smokers, meaning when she's driving you to school, she thinks by rolling down the window a little bit in winter and then the wind just blows it in the back seat, anyways. So I must have smoked a couple packs of secondhand smoke between the ages of five and 13, you know? But whatever. Needless to say, good for you, sir. Keep it up and don't stop for your own good. Uh, Ashnud, yeah, that's why every listing I make says smoke free home. As you should, as you should. The worst thing ever. I bought a cops fighting crime from a future time collection from a weed smoker. And I bought that collection. I opened the box from eBay. And I was like, nope. And I returned it. And I was like, because I put my stuff in glass cases, that stuff, I was like, forget it, forget it. And I returned it. I, I don't have patience for that stuff because it ruins the toys. And there's a lot of figures that have white plastic on them. There's a character named Roadblock. Again, it's Hasbro, so they share trademarks. There's a character named Roadblock. He was all yellowed. There's a character named uh, Bulletproof. He has soft goods that was covered in smoke. Oh, it was terrible. I hate that. That was years ago. That was years and years ago. I did that. It was like 2009 or something, but still don't, don't, uh, don't have patience for that. That is why Proto is smoking hot. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I used to be smoking hot. Look at old photos of me during, uh, the early two thousands. I was a good looking guy. Not so much today. The 40s will uh, do that to you. Being an old man, still got the personality though, but don't got the looks anymore. Um, wife is still good looking though, so that always works out. Maybe she's sucking it from me, keeps her young. Patrick Brown, yes, brought some Seekers once off of eBay and while couldn't breathe, the internal packaging was so bad. Oh God, that's terrible. That's terrible. And that's why if you're doing an eBay listing, you're actually going to do yourself a favor by saying if you're not a smoker or not. Because certain people, there's this one guy, shout out to Gray from TFCon staff. I don't even know if he, he doesn't really come to the, the Toronto shows anymore. But Gray was the first guy that I ever saw. He would pick up figures at conventions and when they're in Ziploc bags and he'd actually smell everything. And that, like, that was the first time I ever saw someone in person do that. He actually would smell figures because I guess he didn't trust sellers. I don't know, maybe a big weed, weed smoking community in, uh, in Toronto. Who knows? <laughs> Um, Mikey Louie and Transformers live action. We get a Transformer that turns into a college girl. Is that like our first trans organic? Uh, no, no. First trans organics would technically be beast machines. Technically. And then you're talking, you know, she's like a pretender, if anything. So not even close because she never had a toy. So, and pretenders did get toys and per and beast machines characters did get toys. So Guillaume, I was working with EB Games from 2008 to 2012, and we would get Xbox console from a heavy smoker, and it was so disgusting, all the vents were still yellowed. And imagine, because you have an internal fan on an Xbox. Because Xboxes, 
and I believe eh, a little bit the the PlayStation 3. They had really big fans back in the day that would suck in everything. So you can only imagine guys who were smoking like crazy while playing. I mean, I used to, I'm from the old arcade era. You know, Street Fighter 2, when it first launched in 92, 93, it was still legal to smoke in arcades. And guys would literally smoke and then they would rest their cigarette on the player one start button in the arcades and you, you would be playing and then the cigarette would fall off and would fall on the guy and then he would bend. It was, I don't know, never was a fan of it, never will be a fan of it. I think it, it, I understand some people get peer pressured into it, but smoking's for losers. Let's put it that way. It's just what it is. Do yourself a favor and stop. It hurts everybody and everything. It, it, it hurts your, your personal goods. It hurts your family. It hurts the people around you. It hurts you, hurts your car, hurts everything. I always say if, it, if they warn you on the box that it could give you cancer and you still do it, who's really the dummy? You know, it's not the cigarette companies. They laugh to the, to the bank for years. Mark Morales with the $5 super chat just dropping in. This new wave is funny. How often do we see, do we get new figures on store shelves breaking their street dates? Also, X-Men 97 was okay. All right, awesome. Uh, well, yeah, I, I saw I saw the the um the core class Cheetor today, which was it's like I see the live stream on Thursday, and then today I go to Toys R Us in the West Island in Montreal, and there was Core Class Cheetor. And I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> that's amazing they only had the core classes uh which also had re re uh repeats of uh energon megatron and um boulder clash was the other one uh mikey and louie uh, and thank you for the super chat mark and enjoy x-men 97 let's hope that it keeps being good i hope uh, Mikey and Louie, is that how toys suffer from yellowing? Is it just smoke? No, it's a multitude of things. Yellowing, the thing with yellowing, and again, let's bring up who I keep leaving next to the computer until one day when maybe it will yellow. It still hasn't happened to mine, but that's because of the environment. But, you know, yellowing is plastisol. Plastisol is already yellow by nature, and it just takes a lot of exposure to a lot of different things. It could be heat specifically humidity. It could be UV exposure. It could be obviously a chemical exposure with cigarette smoke getting into the pores of the plastisol. There's different things that cause yellowing. Also different qualities of plastisol, which will lead to yellowing. I wish, I don't want to have to go dig it up, but I, I posted, um, I po if in the recent plastic segment that I did where we're returning to Windows, in that segment, I show a photo of Alternator's Rodimus, mint and sealed package, and then Alternator's Rodimus, the bootleg that was in circulation. And the best way that you could actually tell the difference between the bootleg and the real one, even if it's sealed in the package, is the quality of plastic on the window was so low quality. It was PET plastic that was used on the bubble that all of them, even if they were stored properly, turn yellow. And I was showing a picture of my personal one in my personal collection. They were both stored in the same environment in a box. One of them yellowed, the other one didn't. That's why my Tigatron didn't yellow though, because this is stored in, in a climate controlled room that doesn't have windows. You know, there's no, there's no UV light on it or anything. I mean, the closest to bad lighting is the fluorescent that I use for the, the modern transformer toys. You guys can't tell. I'd like to show you guys, but you guys can't tell. But the lighting that I use for modern Transformers is different than the lighting that I use for vintage. Vintage uses what's called museum lighting. You could buy it at, you know, Home Depot or whatever. And then this is what I call uh, cool, cool white, cool white, which is just the regular fluorescent. And I use that for all my other stuff too, all the other Transformer stuff, because whatever, you know, you don't need to use museum. Because in person, it's hard to tell, but in person, it doesn't look nice, but it protects your toys. It doesn't damage them. So like I have like a G1, you know, you can't, you can barely see them, but there's like a G1 uh Jetfire over there who notoriously is known for yellowing if you don't store it properly or Minerva is another great one so you have to keep it under a museum lighting which is used for in museums for paintings and stuff because paintings have a light exposure so you know it is what it is hope you learned something from that Archer Monster says it's environmental heat off uh off gazing 
There you go. Exactly. I did. I think I did. I want to say that I did a segment about it. I want to say that I did a segment about it. It might have been a Patreon listener question, but I went deep into it. How like, you know, some people they're like, oh, my God, I ordered X Transformer from Hasbro. And then when I got it in the mail, it was already yellowed. But then I asked them, I'll be like, well, was it delivered to you in front of your house and it was sitting there waiting for you? Yes. Do you live somewhere that's extremely humid? It was Florida. Florida in July, sitting in front of your house. God knows how long it was there. You leave in the morning at 7 a.m. to get to work. They deliver the package at 9. And then it was sitting in Florida, sweltering, muggy heat for like probably, let's say, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3. You get home at 4 or 5. Of course, that's going to have a, a, a deep you know, chemical effect on the plastisol. 100%. Doesn't take much. Doesn't take much at all. Uh, James Hobson, tell my Tigertron is yellow bad. Uh, one on the entire front of the beast mode legs and completely yellowed. Really? The beast mode legs yellow? Well, see, there's the, the actual natural paint, though. But do you mean like the actual feet yellow? Like, like what's supposed to yellow on that? I, I always thought it was the, the, the blue was what everyone was complaining about. See, mine's still good. But, I mean, again, mine is never going to be exposed to anything hot. It could be the hottest day in Montreal, and this room is always cool. So I make sure of that. Something I learned from my pops, because vinyl records, it's the same thing. You don't want them to warp, you know? So you got to keep them cool and in a basement. Uh, Let's see what he said here. Almost completely yellow, uh, non-smoker, non-UV exposure. Only factor is to get humid on some days. Yeah, that's the problem. Because what happens, too, is some people, some collectors, if they live in really hot environments, look, Let's put it this way. If this Tigatron that I just showed you, if I left that in my bedroom on the top floor, for sure, it probably would have yellowed. Because during the day, I'm not going to run the air conditioning when I'm not home. It's a waste of money. And my bedroom gets sweltering hot in summer. So for sure, I would have had that too happen to my Tigatron. You have to, if you have a collection, unfortunately, and I know not everyone has these opportunities. Some people, they live with their parents and they only have the room. But it's something that even when I lived with my parents, I right away started to take over the basement. It started early on. My basement in my parents' house was our living room. And I started displaying my Transformers in the basement. This was like 96, 97 when Beast Wars was out. And then I slowly took over the basement because even back then I was like, you know what? My Super Mario toys, the paint is starting to get damaged because it gets really hot. So I knew back then, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Mikey and Louie, we just got our symbiote plushies of Rodimus and Ultra Magnus. So cute. Where is the plushie matrix, though? Stay tuned. That would be a good one. Get something you could put. It's like a, you could put it around the neck of any of the figures. Stay tuned for that. Well, this is a hot rod, by the way, so it doesn't have the matrix. A Rodimus would have different lines on the face. There's a difference there. So The hips are yellowed on my tiger tree. Hips, too. See that see mine doesn't have that either. Eh? They're they're still white. I don't know. It again, it's this one I knew that it was the blue that was the big issue. The blue was the thing that was turning into like the the yellowing, the bluing, the the greening. That was the one that everyone was uh not happy about. T Formers 2002. I wish I could find a new product. My hometown Walmart has perpetually stuck in legacy year one wave one. Well, unfortunately, the only way to get that to happen is you have to move inventory off of those pegs. And then the toy manager will have to order something new to fill those pegs. That's usually the only way, unfortunately, for it to happen. Some guys, what they do is they buy stuff and then they donate it. So they do a good deed, they donate it, and then they get new product. But then at that rate, you might as well just buy online. Uh... Mikey and Louie, that means that Tigatron smokes when you walk away. Yeah, maybe. Tigatron doesn't seem like someone that would have been a smoker. He's, he's such an environmentalist. Uh, but yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Either way. Either way. i to put these guys away. All of these fell. All of these fell. All the other. Oh, well. I dropped all these cyber planet keys. 
We'll put them all back later. Uh, Proto, I messaged you a pic of my Tigatron on your Instagram. Oh, yeah, I'll check it out after. I will check it out after. I don't have uh, social media on my phone, unfortunately. I don't put that on my phone, so I'll have to check it out after we're done the live stream. I only put social media on my phone temporarily when I do vacations because usually it's the only way I could communicate with people from the States. So I, like, install Facebook Messenger just for that weekend, and then I uninstall it. Because if I left it on there, I'd be disturbed every day of my life. <laughs> uh, Eric Hughes with the $2 super chat. Uh, what does Hasbro have against a buzzsaw? No, they don't have anything against buzzsaw. It's just that they, you know, it's it's something where because it's a character that doesn't have a lot of uh, character potential, you have to really spread it out because you got Waspinator repaints. You got the odd repaints. If like If we ever get like an updated... Armada Cyclonus, you do a buzzsaw from that. You have obviously the the laser beak repaint. So there's not many that you could do. So if you're one of these characters that you want to keep the trademark, but you got to keep it going. Although they do also use buzzsaw with the GI Joe brand. So that's another thing too. If they go crap, we got to use buzzsaw. Oh, don't worry. We just we recently did it on a GI Joe character, Dreadnought. Okay, and then you're done. See you in four years. We'll do a Waspinator repaint in four years. That's what happens. There's there's certain, you know, it's 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 bo it's a boring answer, but it is an answer. You know? Uh Mikey and Louie, what are we getting? Transmetal Beasties. That's all that's left to release. Well, of the season one stuff, anyhow. Uh going into season two, yeah, we gotta start doing transmetals. Well, you look, you you got the beginning of Fusors, you know, Silverbolt is obviously kind of bringing in that kind of stuff. So with the beginning of Silverbolt, we'll see more season two stuff. Obviously we got season three with the dragon Megatron, but that's kind of jumping the gun, but we will see. Uh, I mean, I'd love to see that, that rumored uh, quick strike. I keep seeing in the listings. That'd be really cool. Get an update to quick strike. It's going to be a little tiny, but I'd really like that. Quick strike only really had one toy ever. So it'd be nice to get an update to him. And it's his was translucent plastic, which sometimes is scary when you you take off that that scorpion head with the little clips. It's a little uh, dicey. Uh, the last G1 styled buzzsaw was that new mold in Combiner Wars. Actually, we had um, we had a buzzsaw, didn't we? Didn't we have a buzzsaw through a uh, siege? They did that that multi pack there, or am I making that up in my mind? Because I know I know what you're talking about with with Combiner Wars. They did those little cassette, not cassette, little pieces there with the big uh, leader class sound wave. Ashnud, any thoughts on how GI Joe has been using those trademarks with no thoughts to time save? No, I'm pretty sure that that's all planned in, hundred percent. They do it all the time with other brands. They do that all the time. This goes all the way back to Hasbro in the '90s. Where they'll be like, hey, we're losing trademarks. Oh, we're doing a, you know, RC car line called Record Breakers. This is a real thing. Th you know, there's a there's a RC car line that back in the day Hasbro did called Record Breakers with Jesse Ventura, the wrestler. And if you look at the trademarks that were used for the names of the cars, the Devastator, the Barricade, you know, they knew what they were doing. I think one was called Inferno also. The cops fighting crime in a future time. Tons of Transformer trademarks on there. One Transformer trademark was born out of cops. Long arm, you know? And that's a funny story, too, because Kenner did a Police Academy toy line called uh, Police Academy, the animated series. And they did a toy called Long Arm, which was the name of a character in Police Academy. They kept that trademark. They put it on the cops fighting crime the future time on a character named long arm and then years later they use it on a minicon and then it was used on an animated character for long arm prime it's funny how that works uh let me see i want to make sure i'm not missing it. if i miss any questions guys just uh the only ones i don't miss are the super chats because those go in my face but uh the other ones i don't want to miss the youtube members so if you if i miss them just post them again uh, VCXZ, uh, there was a Waspinator new head deco into Buzzsaw. 
I just think most used uh, the most reuse uh, reuse. Yeah, that there you go. That's what I'm saying. Like there's there's the Waspinator repaints. There's if we if we ever get a new Armada Cyclonus, they could do that into a repaint because that was a Buzzsaw repaint that they did in Cybertron. That was a Japanese exclusive, and then they brought it over here with Long Rack and uh, and uh, Blur and Roundabout. Um, what are we at here? Sarah. So for licensing names, are we going to have Transmetal Beast Beast Mega in 2027? Well, it, that's a Megatron. <laughs> There's, they're 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 doing three Megatrons a year. You're you're not going to get a Transmetal Megatron because of a, of a trademark expiring for Megatron. Uh, and the Transmetal trademark they'll keep alive across, you know, just using it. You know, it's it's what what did they do recently? There was something where they saved what trademark that they save recently. There was something that they saved recently. They put it on a figure. Because I know that I know that um, back in the day. Actually, I have the figure nearby. Let me grab it. Hold on. So this Bumblebee, right? This Bumblebee RPM. If you remember RPMs. This Bumblebee, this was a movie Bumblebee figure, not figure, but die cast, right? This was called Beast Machines Bumblebee. They literally called it that. Guess why? To save something. This came out in, Aaron was still working with Hasbro at the time. I want to say 2010, 2011. I, I love this one because it has like the Cheetor spots on it, even though it's supposed to be honeycombs, but it's like, it's clear that they were trying to do like a Cheetor thing. I love that one. I have a little die cast section over here. You can't see off screen, but you know, that's one example of it. They just throw a name on something, keep it alive. Um, hope I'm not missing any questions. Prince of Alex 59 need a beast wars, Transmetals Megatron and Transmetal Optimus primal. I think it'll happen sooner or later. It, again, they'll have to do another primal sooner or later. You know, after we've gotten over that hump of Rise of the Beast, they got their primal fix. But in four years, and and you know they plan like two, three years in advance. They really do. So they're already thinking about it. They're already thinking about stuff. Hey, you know, for 2027, we'll get our, you know, we'll do maybe a new optimal or something. So. Uh, Talib Proto, did you catch the team say radical and tubular at the end of the live stream? I think it's a hint revealing the new crossover next week. That is a possibility. That is a possibility. Again, BMAC said it's something he's really excited to show. He said it's something with the partners, which could be collaboration items. It's very possible we might get to see the party wagon uh, next week, which would be a really nice reveal. People would dig that. The past few collabs, I, I've been kind of hot or cold. I'm not a big Stranger Things person, so that did nothing for me, the Stranger Things one. Um, but I do dig the Ninja Turtles, and I have all the other transforming Ninja Turtle stuff from the, muta from the Mutations line. So that would be a beautiful addition to the collection. Would love that. Would love it. James Hopkins, do you think Broadside, which uh, we will get sooner or later, will be a leader, commander, or titan? That's a hard one to say because logically, in the way they've been doing things, he should be a leader, but with tidal wave existing, and considering that Broadside has been depicted fighting combiners, you know, that could be a Titan. Could be. It, it should be a leader, but I could see them justifying it as a Titan class. And I'd kind of be fine with that. So we will see. Uh, Billy B, should we expect any pre-order drops during WonderCon weekend where all those drop at a later date? I honestly, I think that they're, I think it's said in the, hold on, where's the, I think it said pre-orders would happen too. One moment. Next dates. I think there's going to be pre-orders. So I think that they might have Studio Series 86 pre-orders happening live that Saturday. I think they said that. Look up the WonderCon uh, press release for that specific. Uh, it's called Hasbro Action Brands on Saturday at 3 p.m. I think it said pre-orders will also drop that same time. 
So, uh, so is it possible we will get a combiner Computron since it's been a while since combiner wars Computron? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Any of those trademarks, if you feel that they're rolling up, what happens is you do it in that first forty-year window period. When the trademark expires, it's refreshed, and then they have a second four-year window period to do it. Now they could do it year one, or they could do it at year seven point five. You know, eight is cutting it close. But the point is, is that so you usually have like a seven-year window sometimes in between trademarks. So I mean, it's four years usually they do it just because they don't want to mess around, and again because they do stuff two years in advance, they don't screw that up. But if they're really stretching it, there's been, I've seen, I, we've done trademark history sometimes on the live streams and on the podcast. Um, and you see some of them go to that seven year mark. I, I always guide everyone to Creo. Creo, the two years before Combiner Wars came out, Creo Combiners existed. And Creo Combiners was specifically created to lock in all of those trademarks. It was just, let's get every single combiner name under the, the sun locked in. And that's Creo combiners in a nutshell. And that's because Creos were ridiculously easy to manufacture. And all of the Creo combiners, all the pieces that made the minifigs were all pre-existing stuff. It was just decos. That's all it was. Like the head of Devastator was the head, same head for Starscream. The head for, you know, the head for, uh, for, um, for Defensor was the head that was used for Ironhide. The head that was used for Predaking is the same head that was used for the cone heads. Like they were just recycling stuff. So all they had to do was just take pre-existing sculpts already because Creos were easy to do with decos and, and tampos. And then just slap on those trademarks and get them ready for the future. Because when John Warden was going to start his era, it was going to be combiners. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? Buzzsaw names have been used in the past couple of years. Well, there you go. That's why there's, it, it's, it's some, you know, the thing is, is that you have to, you have to think about the grand scheme of things because you could go like, oh my God, they haven't done a roadblock in a while. While on, there's tons of roadblocks in GI Joe. So that's what keeps that going. And that's why you don't see a roadblock in, let's say transformer stuff. When you have a shared, they just actually, they, what was it recently? They just put out the shockwave from G.I. Joe and not like G.I. Joe shockwave, like shockwave, the character from G.I. Joe, which was an actual character in G.I. Joe. There's a character named Sideswipe, you know? So sometimes that stuff happens. And because we're not Transformer fans, it goes over our head. But you have to you have to pay attention to that. Uh, Ron Diaz, can we get uh, from HasLab a based on IDW period? If there's a demand, Nemesis Prime, thank you for joining the minicons. Um, if there's a demand, the the question would be, what would you want that's that's in that upper tier that would be justifiable? All HasLab items break that three digit, if not more. That's what they always do. If they're going to make the time and energy for a for a low numbers product, they're going to do something big and expensive, so they can make that money, make that bank. Um, but what would be in the IDW verse that you would want? Like an IDW overlord? You know, what would be a big item that we would want that would justify? I mean, I wouldn't want an IDW overlord when we got an overlord in retail, you know? Like, if it shows that it could be done in retail, I don't want to have what I, I call it the HasLab tax. I don't want the HasLab tax on an item. Aaron picking up the the uh, the his tank that makes sense. I don't see that his tank in that box working on a Walmart shelving, but I'm sorry, you know I don't care what anyone says. And granted, it's awesome. Don't get me wrong, but I still feel like Fire Convoy, Optimus, and the Ultra Magnus those could have been retail products, but instead they were able to sell it to us with the Haslab tax and get us to pay a little more. Hey, we could get them to pay forty dollars more per character, you know, and then we justify it with some extra plastic stuff on the side. Hey, man, toy sales are going down for Hasbro right now. People are laying off. They are gonna do what they need to do 
to get that money up, you know, to report to their investors. The Rod Pod HasLab, I don't think that would be a wise move. <laughs> it would be cool, but it would not be a wise move from a business standpoint. Like I said, there's what I like, and then there's what makes sense. Just because I say it's not a good idea for business doesn't mean it's not something I would enjoy. Um, IDW Primus, nah, you just do Primus. Why would you muddy the waters? You just make a Primus. If you rotate Cyclonus Kingdom, uh, it's perfect uh, Manta Ray, so new depth charge. Ah, uh, just do a new depth charge. You know what I mean? Just do a new depth charge that shoots discs out of his chest. Have that, you know? Why uh, go to that Cyclonus mold for the 50 billion time? If you want to do, unless you want to do a Cybertronian Cyclonus, that's the only other explanation. Uh, VCXZ, speaking of HasLab, very sad there is no tier three for Omega Prime yet. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Uh, DJD, again, that could be retail. We already got retail DJD. We already got Tarn, you know? They're reissuing Tarn because he sold so well. So why would you want to pay the HasLab tax when you could pick him up in retail? I'm just saying, don't encourage paying more. You know what I mean, guys? Don't encourage paying more. If you could get it in retail, opt to get it in retail. Don't encourage them to put it behind something that has FOMO and a weird secondary market. You know, you're not seeing HasLab items getting sold in the secondary market at a loss. But if you have a DJD member, that's a retail item. If you don't like paying full retail, at least you might get an opportunity in clearance. Although, again, Tarn wasn't a good example of that, but the others would be. Uh, Billy Wee still wondering if HasLab is a multi-pack itself and the toys themselves. Uh, I don't know. Uh... Nemesis Prime, hey Proto, been looking for Transmetal One Primal. Is the Chrome on the US version sturdier? I'm in Hong Kong, getting both versions about the same price. Uh, Primal, it, Primal is one of those few Transmetals that actually had a clear coat put on it. Yeah, you'll you'll always have any kind of flaking if it's not stored properly and and like mishandled. But the only Transmetals, in my opinion, or Chrome in general, that really have problems is transmetal rat trap uh transmetal ramulus and then you get to like ultra jet storm from beast machines yeah a lot of the others are really good like i mean cheetor is i mean you could mash that you could throw that cheetor on the floor a hundred times and the chrome won't come off just they didn't clear coat some of them uh, but Primal is fine. Primal is is sturdy and very good. Same thing with Megatron. Megatron has other problems. <laughs> you probably know what those problems are. But the Primal, totally good. Totally good. Nothing to worry about. Very sturdy. The only thing that ever broke on a Primal from the many times I've been buying and selling them is I've seen sometimes that the connection for the feet to the chrome pieces, I've seen those broken sometimes. But otherwise, very sturdy figure. Very sturdy figure. Thank you for the question. We got some super chats. I don't want to miss them. Oh, no. I got to reach the other mouse because I missed some questions. Uh, John Deckard with the $5 super chat. What about a IDW K-On? See, IDW K-On for HasLab. Not really massive figure. Not something they do for retail considering it's all. That one, again, that could be retail. You know what I mean? Because it's too deep cut for HasLab, and it's something where what would the the backer things be? Would it be mini Megatron figures? Again, it's that's a tough one. To me, it's like, and and none of these answers that I'm going to say are going to be legit because if you would have if you would have told me like, yeah, they're going to be doing. Robots in the Skies, 2001, Car Robots, Optimus Prime, Fire Convoy, and Ultra Magnus is the Haslab. I would have been like, that's a stupid idea, and they shouldn't do that. And yet, here we are, you know? And I'm not saying the items are stupid. I'm not saying they're, the engineering's not amazing, and they look like cool figures and everything, even though they're only so much different from the originals, which were great figures. But at the same time, 
you're now paying the same amount that you would have paid to have the originals, if not more, you know? And to me, that's, the, and that's the HasLab tax where you sometimes pay way more than you need to for items. Unicron, I get it. They didn't really know what they were doing back then, but the others, you've heard my two cents on them. Uh, Modutron Prime Proto, do you think transformation gimmicks of Mike Sounder from Gal Geiger, Galette, and Kabutak would work in Transformers? Uh, M Mike Sounder's transformation, which is a fairly simple one, has that ever been kind of done? I, I got to look at the old G G1 kind of stuff because that all that brave stuff is very G2 kind of in transformation. Even when you look at um, web divers my web diver stuff is here i don't know it's, it's it's too simple you know i'm pretty sure there must be like a a licensed like transformer item that's very simple or you know what i bet you there's something that's like mike sounder and probably like those low-end authentics kind of stuff they probably have something as a similar transformation or even dare i say bot bots Bopbots might have something that's similar to Mike Sounder's transformation. You only like three steps, you know, fold out and there you go. And Mike Sounder's on the back of the robot, you know, for people that are lost, we're talking about Gal Geiger and a very cool character. Um, James Hopkins, I found another. And, and by the way, Mike Sounder's voice actor is the same voice as uh, Superlink uh, Roadbuster, a.k.a. Ironhide from Energon. Same voice actor. Uh, and Itsuki from Initial D. James Hopkins, I found another Tarn in retail the other day. Fantastic, man. Pick it up. Share it with uh, the community. Maybe someone would like to pick it up. T-Formers 2000, uh, DJD is risky. Alt modes for retail, doesn't it? Yeah, of course. How are you going to do, do an electric chair transformer? You know, that's the problem. That's the big issue. We got another super chat from Chris Ellis. What are your thoughts on Missing Link Optimus and possible other releases? I think Missing Link Optimus is really cool. He's a little expensive, but I think it's a really cool idea. I think that if they did do another one, uh, the logical direction, because it is a Japanese-only line, should be Generation 1 Megatron. Uh, it would give people an opportunity to pick up a gun. Um, obviously, it would have to be imported. You know, ship it in... Ship it in... Uh, in um what do you call it in robot mode and people will dig it and i think it would sell ridiculously well i think it would do very very well if it did because so many people are bugging for gun megatrons you're not going to get it in american retail but japan could pull it off and i think people would dig it the g1ers would love it the people that are looking for a gun megatron for their display would love it because it would probably be the closest we could get to something because if it's really based one for one on the original Gun Megatron, yeah. Gun Megatron is eh, six inches in robot mode, maybe seven if the if you don't have uh, really damaged sliders on his legs. So if they retool it a little bit, they could probably pull something off. I could see it working. Gun, you don't need to do Soundwave. Soundwave had tons of articulation in his original G1 toy. I guess you could do Bumblebee, but that'd be kind of boring. Another Bumblebee that's like that, you know, with the screen accurate face sculpt i guess which they've already done through reissues i think a megatron would be a good one i got i think the megatron would be a very smart move would i need it probably not but it would be a smart move uh where are we at where are we at where are we at i don't want to miss anything I'm missing so many here uh, thinking about cutesy robot hero concept of Mike Sounder. Well, that again, and then you look at BotBots because BotBots is filled with stuff that look like Mike Sounder. <laughs> Tons of it. Especially his uh, his non-transformed robot mode. Sarah, please no start the FOMO because at the way that Hasbro is going, we have an Optimal Optimus Commander or HasLab. I could see Optimal Optimus as a Commander class if he's a HasLab. Gosh, why? Why? Again, I I still feel HasLab needs to be stuff that don't make sense for retail. You could bring Optimal Optimus to retail and make money. You could have tons of Walmarts and Targets and mom and pops buying pallets and money. 
But no, you're going to want just 20,000 units sold with your Hasbro tax put on it of an extra $40. You know, shortcuts lead to dead end, my friend. And a company that's already having financial issues right now, that is not the way to go about it. That is not the way to go about it. Uh, Mike, uh, Mikey and Louie, Megatron is six and a half inches, but uh, to tell all the Decepticons, he is 10 inches. <laughs> So there you go. So six and a half inches, again, which works well with most Voyager classes. So if you want a true gun Megatron and they'll do an updated version, like you, they'll do the missing link Megatron done that's toy accurate with the toy accurate, you know, face and the toy accurate coloring and, and deco. And then they'll do missing link, you know, screen accurate Megatron. It'll have the screen accurate face and the screen accurate stuff. And it won't come with the sword, but it'll come with like, you know, some other stuff, maybe the mace and the other one will come with the gun and the, the, the sword. So you could have two different kinds of accessories across. Look at all these free ideas I'm giving to car, Tommy and Hasbro. I swear, you know, like that's the easiest. It's, it just, it, it writes itself. You know, it's so easy. Blue legs, red legs, you know, black repaint down the line for the diaclone colors. Gosh. Don't forget Peroto, no repaint potential. For who? For who we're talking about? What are we talking about here? Who's the no repaint potential? James. Protoism. It is a protoism. Um, no repaint potential for Optimal Optimus. Oh, I mean, yeah, well, if you make it a HasLab, now you can't do Primal Prime. Now you can't do this guy. You can't do the traditional colored one, King King Primal, as I like to call it, the Throne of the Primes. So you're going to sacrifice three different repaints you could do? Come on, guys, don't do that, you know? And again, we're never going to see this, dude. You know, yeah, okay, you're not going to get the the black, black instead of blues, black repaint of Ultraman. But you're never going to see, you know, Splendid Convoy. Not smart. Not how I would do it. But again, has lab tax. They get to make a little money. Uh, Princeton, a good has lab that doesn't make sense in retail would be Chris Cox because he doesn't make any sense for Hasbro. To be fair, to be fair, and I'm not in Chris's corner, but Chris Cox is focused on Magic the Gathering. He he was the president of the Ma of Magic the Gathering before moving into the CEO position. And he's going to focus on Magic the Gathering because Magic the Gathering makes easy money for Hasbro. So I almost feel like Chris Cox is not even looking at Transformers. He's probably just going, what? Huh? Okay, do your thing. So I honestly feel like that's not even the case. I think that there's decisions being made from higher ups, but not Chris Cox. Uh, where, are we, where are we at? Shortcuts lead to dead ends. Oh, yeah, totally. Totally. A hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent that. And, and the worst thing I hate is when a company does that kind of stuff, they do, they take shortcuts, they take shortcuts and then they go, why don't we have money? You know, you have to, you have to be smart with this stuff. You don't take those, those, those easy roads, man. You got to think in the long term. but I mean, some of the some of those people, they don't look at them as careers. They go, oh, I'll work at Hasbro for two years. And then when the company goes under, I'll go work for this company. You know, that it's a sad reality. So because people people aren't lifers, I guess is the best way to put it, when it comes to companies now, they don't feel like they're gonna begin and end their their employment careers with Hasbro. I mean, you look at look at Aaron, who's in the chat today. Aaron started in with Kenner in ninety five. You said ninety four, you know, and then you left the company in officially in two thousand thirteen, two thousand fourteen, and then you pretty much haven't been back in the toy industry since. You've been doing other stuff since then, but it shows he didn't get to start his his work adult career and end it with the same company. And he comes from that old guard. He comes from the old guard, the new guys today. I mean, I love Mark, Evan and BMAC, but if you told me that they're not going to be there in two years, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, 
It's a different world today. You know, now it's get in there, make as much money as you can and get out of there, which is a shame because if you want to have a loyalty to a brand, that's not a way to carry yourself, unfortunately. And that that goes all the way to the top and the bottom. I'm not accusing anyone in Hasbro for being like that, but it's the general kind of company kind of way of thinking that some people have that then lead to those kind of things. You know, uh, where are we at here? Sarah, so we'll never get that yellow fire truck Optimus Prime reissued for mainline. Unfortunately not, because the HasLab promise is that this stuff does is not seen in retail. You know? And again, they've they've said they said before they never do an Optimus Prime, and they did, but so I don't know. I don't even know what the rules are anymore. I'm going exactly by what they say. If what they say doesn't have water, then I don't know what to tell you, you know. Like when I was saying, oh, they they said they don't do an Optimus for Haslabs. They don't do Optimus Primes for Haslabs. I was just repeating what Evan said. Evan said it on live streams. Evan said it in private. And then, well, then Evan himself said, oh, I was being stupid. So there's nothing I could say after that. You know, if one of the lead designers says it and then they have to 180. There's not much really that could be said. Got to find my other Decepticon one. I think that was thrust. Fell on the floor somewhere. It is what it is, like I always say. But anyways, guys, we are at the two-hour mark already. Goodness, time flies when we're having fun. So, guys, once again, thank you for coming on the live stream. Be sure to support Symbiote Studios. Go pick yourself up a nice little plush with the new Hot Rod and Ultra Magnus with his grinny face. I'm waiting for mine. Mine are coming in the mail, so it'll be. I'll probably put Hot Rod chilling on top of... Uh, with Catnip Bravo. So when you see him in the background, you'll know that uh, the time has come. Um, and Ultra Magnus will join, uh, will join the others over there. So, um, so again, check out Symbiote Studios. Go check out archermonster.com forward slash shop. Go check out Aaron stuff. Go pick yourself up some good, good little original art or even commission something from him. I'm sure he could put you something together if you give him a, a message. He's always glad to talk to you. And uh, again, if you want to support me as opposed to those guys, although helping those guys also help me too. But, you know, if you want to support me, uh, Patreon, that's the best way to support the podcast. Come join the Patreon. It gives you access to our Discord. It gives you access to sales. There is a massive sale in Canada right now. I'm not going to say what it is. You got to join the Patreon to check it out. But if you're a Canadian, go check out that massive sale that's happening right now. Um, I'll give you a hint. It's Toys R Us. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. Um, but yeah. So again, join the Patreon, help support the podcast. Otherwise, if you don't like Patreon, the green names on the side, the YouTube memberships, that's another way to do it. Uh, people asking about dinner. I'm going to have samosas tonight and tomorrow is Japanese curry made by my lovely wife. So that's about it. Thank you all for listening. My name is Proto Man. This is the Transformer Slag Podcast. And thank you all for coming. It was an awesome evening, like always, with you guys. And we will talk more later this week. I am probably going to do an individual segment breaking down uh, the Nitro Convoy thing, the override thing we saw, if we get some new updates over the next 24 hours. Because I know that Sunday's stuff might be coming. So there's, let's just say, guys, there's a lot of times there's stuff that leaks out and I don't want to talk about it until it's on the Western websites. Then it, I'm not responsible for the leak. Let's put it that way. When TFW or other guys leak it out, then I could go, okay, I'll talk about it. So let's just say there's stuff that's already out there right now. Photos from the Chinese side of things that have not surfaced yet. It probably will on Sunday or Monday. So stay tuned. Okay. Um, but we will see. Anyways, guys, thank you for everything. I am out of here. Take care of yourselves, your friends, your families, and everything. The world is not as shitty a place as people always say it is. It's a lot more awesome than you think. If you go out there and go for a walk, although the weather's a little sketchy right now, but if you go out there and go for a walk and talk to people, you realize how great the world is compared to what people say it is and all the negative ninnies on Twitter, Instagram, and everything else that, uh, you know, they're unhappy. They want to make you unhappy so that you could be unhappy together. But you don't need that. Go get some exercise and relax and enjoy life. I am out of here. 
I actually have to go take a shower. I actually didn't get to take a shower yet. I'm going to be taking a late shower too. So I'm going to go take a shower, play some video games, take a little nibble of some samosas, have some good stuff, and play some Guardian Legends on the Nintendo Switch. And that'll be that. I'm out of here. Take care of yourselves. Peace! And I got to reach that. Uh, peace.